Greetings, good afternoon, thanks very much for listening. My good friend and friendly neighbor wanted me to review this video this week, so I'm doing this as a friend, and of course to learn and perhaps help other people as well as learning myself. Now to be clear, I do not know if this event on the video was real. I am not judging anyone involved with the video negatively. It's not a personal review, this is a theological review. At the 150 mark, approximately, and I'm going to use approximate times from the video, and I'm paraphrasing people because I do not have an official transcript. This gentleman said, people should not fear death. In other words, people should not fear God. I disagree. From my Reformed theological perspective, we are finite and sinful. Look at Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Hebrews, other parts of the New Testament. We need to have the work of Christ on the cross, the gospel work, the applied atoning and resurrection work of Christ applied to us. We need to have the righteousness of Christ imputed to us to be justified, to be like Christ, to say that people should not fear death, people should not fear God. That's implying works righteousness. We don't have works righteousness. Romans 5, 10 paraphrased, we were enemies of God until we were reconciled by his death on the cross. And we are saved by his life. We are saved by the death and resurrection of Christ applied to us. Ephesians 2 paraphrased, we are not saved by works whatsoever. And basically, by grace through faith, we've been saved through faith, not by your own doing, not by your own works, by gift of God, not a result of works, so no one should boast for workmanship in Christ. So in other words, to do works in Christ by Jesus Christ. So at 150, it's wrong to say we should not fear death. People should, unless they're in Christ, clearly in Christ, clearly covered by his atoning and resurrection work, justified in Christ's righteousness. At 530, he's above his body. He's not by self. Well, what's the identity of this being with him? Angel? Demon? Christ? God? Satan? But this is in contrast to Luke 23, that the person beside Christ on the cross will be with him in paradise. 2 Corinthians 12, 4, Paul was in paradise. Philippians 1, Paul died to be in the presence of God in paradise. It shouldn't be wondering the ID of the being. If you're with an angel... Uh, when you die in Christ, you may not instantly be in paradise, but soon you'll be in the presence of Jesus and God. You won't wonder where you're going. Uh, at 7.45, time to go. Where? Where is this man going? It's not made clear. He's not said he's with Jesus. He's told at 7.55 and other places not to look back. Why? Because because you shouldn't resist? Maybe, humanly speaking, he should resist because it's better off for the time being not being dead. At 9.28, roughly, he's left alone. Why is he left alone? If he's in paradise, he should be in the presence of Christ. Or if he's going to paradise, he should be in the presence of God's angels and Christ. That seems more like Luke 16, where the man's left alone in Hades. Again, he's told not to look back at 9.50. Why not? At the 10-minute mark, he faces judgment, good and bad. He is sinful. Revelation 20, we are judged for our deeds, unless our name is in the book of life. We are not going to be in God's presence. We are eventually going to be in the lake of fire after being in Hades. And perhaps this hand reaching out was reaching out to take this man to Hades, and it just wasn't his time yet.